Find the distance between the lines R1, 1, 2, 0, plus lambda 1, 1, minus 1, R2, 0, 3, minus 1, plus mu times 2, minus 1, 3. Now this is a very difficult thing to actually uh, vis visualise, so we're going to help with the help of a GeoGebra app. I'm going to see if we can visualise this. These lines are what was known as skew lines, so I'm going to um, do this first without uh, the 3D effect, and then later at the end I will put on the glasses and do the 3D effect in this video for you. So, if we look at our two lines here, these are what's known as skew lines, so if we twist them around a bit, you can see that it would be impossible to form a plane between these two lines. This one here is line 1, and this is line 2. Okay, there are several different ways of finding the distance between skew lines, but the easiest way is to use uh, what's known as the ve uh, scalar projection of ve one vector, which we'll call A, onto another vector, which we'll call B. So we're going to sort the scalar projection of A onto B. Now, in order to do this, we'll draw a diagram. So here I have A, which is a point on the line, and I have two vectors going out of it. One vector will join a, the, a point on the second line. So let's have this point on one line and this point on the second line. This is one vector, which we're going to call the vector A. If we drop down the perpendicular from here, right, we have a right angle, a perpendicular from here, and I'm going to call this other vector here B. We'll talk about that vector in a minute. This one's easy to find. Where this is angle uh, theta, and I'm just going to call this point N, then by trigonometry, this length here, which is what we're interested in, actually gives me the shortest distance between the two lines. And this is called the scalar projection of a onto B. And by trigonometry, this is called the magnitude of A cos theta. So just all we used is a little bit of trigonometry here. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The length of this is magnitude of A. And therefore, this length here, the adjacent side, will be the magnitude of A times the cos of theta hypotenuse times the cos of the angle. And this is what the distance that we were actually interested in. Now, from vectors, we know that A dot B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cos of the angle between them. So these are my two vectors going away from each other, and this is the angle between them. But I know that A from here, rearranging this, this distance here, magnitude Sorry, just rewind back. Sorry, the magnitude of A cos theta is going to be A dot B over the magnitude of B. Now this mm. bit here, this bit here is the scalar projection of A onto B, i.e. this distance. So let's just go back to um, well, let's just go back to our two lines, and then we'll relate it to the diagram. So our two lines are R one is one two zero. That's our point lambda one. 1 minus 1 and R2 which is 0, 3, 1, 2 minus 1, 3. So this is my point. So I can find a vector joining the two points by doing AB is equal to AO plus OB, so it's negative that one, plus that one, plus, and that gives me minus 1, 1 and 1. So on my diagram now, uh, if I if I click on this, I get the two points A and B. These are the two d directional vectors of the line, so say that these are taken from these. And then if I click on here, I get the uh, vector joining both of those two points. This vector here, which I just calculated, and I've got here minus one, one, one. Right. Now what I need to do is find a vector which is uh, perpendicular to the line. I'm going to click this 
perpendicular to the line, so this vector here is actually perpendicular to the line, line it's going to be perpendicular to line 1, and this angle here is my theta in, in my uh, triangle which I just drawn on in the other part of my diagram, okay, and this is my perpendicular drop down which is 90 degrees to vector b, alright, so the orange vector is vector b, it's perpendicular to the line 1 here, okay, so just look at that from different angles, just so that we can see, okay, and right, and later we'll look at it in 3D. Okay, so the distance between the two lines will be from this point to this point here. Now it doesn't look like it, but we'll look at it when we'll look at it in 3D at the end. So going back to this, to find that perpendicular, that vector B, so that's vector A, we need to take the directional vectors of each of the lines and find their vector product or cross product. So we know how to do that. We put this in the form i, j, k. We write down the first one, which is 1, 1, minus 1. We write down the second one, 2, minus 1, and 3. And then we cover up this one and then find the determinant of what's left. So it would be 1 times 3 minus minus 1 times minus 1. Lots of i. Next one is always minus. We cover up j. We do 1 times 3. 1 times 3 minus 1 times 2. The next one, last one's plus, and the last one we do, we cover up this, we do 1 times minus 1 minus 1 times 2. Be very careful with the signs, okay? So that comes down to be 3 minus 1, minus 1 is 1, times minus 1 is 1, lots of i, minus 3 plus 2, so it's 1 times 3 minus minus 1 times 2 is plus 2, lots of j, and then minus 1, minus 2, lots of k. So we get here 2i minus 5j minus 3k. Now we, we will call that vector b, but um, we, in the, for the sake of our diagram, we're going to take the opposite one. So we're going to take minus 2 plus 5 plus 3. So we're just going to change the sign. It doesn't matter. It's still perpendicular. It's just going in the opposite direction and that will tally up with our diagram. You don't necessarily have to do this bit in order to find the shortest distance. So, this here gives me this vector here, which is perpendicular to uh, the line A. Okay, and if we look round, I don't know if we can see, that will actually give me, if we look from that angle, you can see that that distance here, the shortest distance from here to here, from here to here, so from here to here will give me the shortest distance between these two skew lines. If you look at it that way, maybe that will help you see it. Okay, so that you can see that gives me the shortest distance between these two lines. Even though the line's here, if we just move it over here a bit, this will represent the shortest distance. Okay. So, the shortest distance between L1 and L2 is given by the scalar projection of A onto B which is like that, where this is a 1, minus 1, 1, 1, this is b, 2, 5, 3, don't forget this is all of b, this is the bit that we want, and the distance is given by a dot b over the magnitude of b, so doing the scalar product we do minus 1 times minus 2, plus 1 times 5, plus 1 times 3 over the magnitude of this one, so it's going to be minus 2 squared plus 5 squared plus 3 squared. This gives me 10 on the top, and this gives me 4 plus 25, 29 plus 9, which is 38. So we're going to get 10 over root 38, multiplying the top and bottom by root 38, root 38. So that's going to give me 10 over 38, which cancels down to 5 over 19 times root 38, which is approximately equal to 1.62. So, if we click on here, 
you'll see that distance here. You can see this shape, this uh, dash distance here, represents the distance between two lines. And like I say, if you put the so it looks like that, you'll see that that actually represents the shortest distance between those two lines. Now, if you were to use 3D glasses, okay, so you need to put on, for the rest of the video, you now need to put on your red cyan glasses. So in uh, GeoGebra, if you do uh, right-click and graphics view, graphics, and do projection, and go to glasses and select the glasses, and then it's better at grayscale, or you can do it in color if you want to, and press OK, you will now get to see it all in three dimensions. So let's just take this all off so we can just see what we did there. Let's take it all off. Okay, so then we've just got the two lines. So if we click there, we now get the two points. So we get that point and that point. So I can't really, those two points, I hopefully can see that. If we click here, this just gives me the directional vectors of the of the two lines. If we click the vec, this one here, we get the vector joining A and V, and that's called vector A. Okay, if we click this one here, we get what's known as the uh, vector product of the directional vectors v1 and v2 could we could have it going the other way but it just looks better if it goes this way for the diagram so this is vector b here okay notice it, it is drawn from a and this bit here is 90 degrees okay and we drop down the perpendicular here and we can also see that that is 90 degrees with the vector b as well the perpendicular and if we click here, all right, the actual distance is this striped a bit here, and that gives me 1.62 or 5 root 38 over 19. If we move it around, we can really see what we're talking about here. If I move it like that, you can definitely see that that distance there is the shortest distance rep represented by that. Okay, just notice when we've got two skew lines like that, it's not possible to make a plane the two two lines okay they don't form a plane okay so it's quite a difficult concept but with the 3d glasses 3d effect I think you can very easily see that that it gives you the shortest distance between the two lines this is called the scalar projection of this vector here on to this vector here okay scalar projection of that vector onto that vector gives you the shortest distance between the two lines. Okay, so it's quite a difficult concept, but with a bit of visualization you can see it's work. So all you do is find a vector joining the two points, which is very easy to do because you're always given two points in a line, there's one, there's the other. Find the cross product of the directional vectors, okay, and then do the scalar product and the divide by the magnitude of the cross product. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand the distance between two skew lines. Sorry about a long video and I hope you've enjoyed this.